Hello, this is Joanna for the Mountain Goat Molt Project. And this is a video tutorial on how to use Adobe Photoshop to calculate goat molt. The goal of processing these images is to calculate the shed versus unshed ratios. First, you'll begin by opening your file in Photoshop. You can do this in a variety of different ways. You can drag your file onto the Photoshop icon and open it that way or you can access the file open menu and that'll open up a window and you can go ahead and find your file on your computer that way. I've gone ahead and opened our file already and we're gonna be working with this image which is a JPEG file. Most of the images that are going to be coming in for us to process are JPEG files. We'll be saving it later once it's rendered as a JPEG file as well as a Photoshop file which is extension.psd, but more on that later. I'd like to introduce you to the workspace. On the left hand side we have our toolbar and on the right hand side we have more tools for our workspace. On the left, back at the toolbar, if you hover over each of these tools, Photoshop will pop up with a little menu that explains what each tool is and what it does, as well as show you the short key, which is right after the title of each tool. So here you can see brush tool and in parentheses after that, it says B. That means that when I'm working in my file, I can just type the letter B and I can quickly access my brush tool. We'll also be working with the hand tool, which you can access by typing the letter H or by using the space bar. I learned on an older version of Photoshop, so I've always used the space bar. And we'll be using quick mask mode. And the short key for quick mask mode is Q. Again, you can access all of these tools from the toolbar or you can use the short keys. I'll be teaching you a variety of other short keys as we move through the file. On the right hand side, we have our swatches, our histogram, and our layers. Those are the three most important windows to have open while we work on our file. The swatches will be using the colors red and black. Here with the histogram, we'll be counting pixels. And our layers tab will allow us to keep our file organized. I like to explain layers as a lasagna. So whatever we've got going on here, this is going to be our base layer, and then we can build on top of this, and you'll see that in a short time. If these menus are not coming up, you can access them quickly by going over to the window dropdown, and you can see here histogram, layers, and swatches, and these are conveniently alphabetized. What I like to do is save my workspace. And you can do that by going up to Workspace, clicking New Workspace, and you can title your workspace whatever you'd like. I titled mine Goat Processing. So when I'm working on a file for the Goat Molt project, I can easily access this exact workspace and have all of my tools ready to go. What I'd like to do is immediately duplicate our background layer. And you can do that very easily by clicking on the background layer and dragging it over to the new layer icon, which looks like a little dog-eared page, and just drop it. And as you can see here, I now have a background copy layer. Nothing's changed in my image because I've just created a duplicate. We're going to go ahead and begin selecting our goat. And in quick mask mode, or Q, the layer that you're working on will show up with this opaque red tone over top of it. And that's what our selection will look like as well. The default mode for, the, for your tool, which you'll be using the brush tool to select the animal, the default colors will be black and white. Black will show up as red when you begin selecting. 
The brush tool has many different settings and you can access those easily by clicking here and the menu will drop down. You can change the shape of the brush by clicking on these circles here and that'll change the shape. And then this little arrow at the top will help you rotate your brush. So again, shape and angle. This will become very, very useful later when we start filling in the more complex areas around the top of the goat here. And you can follow the angle with your brush and easily paint those selections in. We want our hardness on our brush turned all the way up to 100%. This allows for no feathering, which basically means that we're not choosing a partial pixel. There's no opacity. We're choosing a fully hard brush. Up at the top here, we want to make sure that our opacity is turned all the way up. Our flow is 100%. We don't need to worry at all about the smoothing. And we want to make sure that our mode, painting mode is set to normal. A few quick keys to learn are the command and plus key. So you hold down command and plus, and it allows you to zoom in. The command minus allows you to zoom out. When we're working with such great detail, we want to be able to navigate easily around our image. Over on the sides here, once you're zoomed into your image, you can see that there are bars that allow you to move your image up and down or left and right. Or you can use your hand tool. And I don't like to be interrupted while I'm working with the brush by clicking the H. So what I prefer to do is hold down the space bar this allows me to quickly access the hand and then I can just click and drag. And again, I'm not changing anything about my image right now. I'm just navigating. So you can see that those bars are moving along with my movement as well. In order to make the most of our time here, I'm going to use a round brush and I'm going to make it very large. And I can do that either by accessing the size drop down here in the brush settings, or I can use my brackets. The right bracket will make my brush larger, the left bracket will make my brush smaller. So right now I'm just gonna use a huge brush and I'm going to click and drag and I'm going to start selecting this goat. And I'm not being very careful here right now because I'm just filling in the center of the animal. And the goal is to isolate the goat first. So we want the whole goat isolated. And that's whole goat sends hoof and horns, no eye and no nose. So we just wanna make sure that we don't select those later. So again, command plus and uh, allows us to zoom in and the space bar allows us to quickly navigate around the image. Small bracket or left bracket to make my brush smaller. And I'll be coming back in here to get a little bit more of these details once I've changed my brush. It's also very easy to deselect once you've made a selection by using the eraser tool. And you can access that easily by clicking the letter E. And I'm going to go ahead and select that now. We want to make sure that all of our settings are the same for our eraser as they are for the brush. So I want to make sure my hardness is turned all the way up, the opacity is all the way up, the flow is all the way up, and we're not worried about this moving. So if I do make a selection, I can just go back in 
and erase it if it's not something that I wanted. And I can go quickly right back to my brush by typing the letter B. We have a little nose right here. I'm gonna avoid that. Have a little bit of an open mouth going on here because this little guy is grazing. And I'm going to select this leg here. And again, I'm going to be coming back in here to make some more detailed selections once I've done most of the selection with this larger brush. And part of this hoof, actually I think all of these hooves, is concealed by the meadow. So we just want to make sure that we indicate that on our spreadsheet. We're making some educated guesses here in regards to the hooves. We're also making a couple educated guesses in regards to the shedding as well as the shape of the animal itself. So when the goats start shedding, it's very, very itchy for them. So they start rubbing themselves on a variety of different surfaces. Um, and that can include a fence, um, rocks, bark, a variety of different surfaces. Um, and that helps them speed the shedding process. Um, again, because it's very itchy for them. So what tends to happen is that they end up getting these really very large uh, stray bunches of hair. So we don't want to make any of those selections down around these areas because that's not really the goat body. Okay, so I'm going to select the brush settings here. I'm gonna change my brush. I'm gonna use a very angled brush now, very upright um, brush. And I'm going to zoom in pretty far into my image space bar to move up to the top. I'm gonna to start selecting some of this hair here. Rotate it again using the small arrow and this will help me have a little bit more of a refined selection. And again, we don't want to select too much of this because we're not quite sure through an image how much of that hair is on the body and how much of it is off of the body. And while I have this angled brush, I'm just going to go in here and refine some of these selections that I made earlier. And again, this is another one of those areas where the hair is definitely coming off of the animal. Here it's a little bit ambiguous. I am seeing the bottom of the abdomen right here. So I can make an educated guess based on that, that we're still kind of moving along through here. A little bit more body here. This back leg is a little challenging. Again, the meadow's sort of in the way. Select a little bit more of this fur here. And I'll go ahead and change the angle of my brush. And we'll select a little bit more in this area here. All right. And 
and just a little bit more here on the back. And that's a pretty good selection there. Again, no horns, no eye, no nose, no mouth, no hooves. Although our hooves, again, are hidden by this meadow here. All right. So in order to exit quick mask mode now and isolate our goat, we can type the letter Q. And you can see now that I have some marching ants. That's what they're called in the Photoshop world. They're traveling around my animal here. And these marching ants help me see what my selection is. So I'm going to go ahead and isolate this goat now. I'm going to do that by selecting the lasso tool and then I'm going to right click around my selection and I'm going to make a new layer via copy. So as you can see my marching ants have disappeared but over here I have a new layer. So in order to see just this layer I can cl click these eyeballs here that indicate, as you can see, it says indicates layer visibility. And you can see now that I've isolated my goat. This checkered background back here means that there's absolutely no information there. So I like to stay incredibly organized in Photoshop. Once you start working in with photos that are, you know, very large files and you have multiple layers happening, you're doing maybe a photo composite, things can tend to get a really, really messy very quickly. So I'm just going to go ahead and title this layer goat. And I can do that by double clicking there on the name and typing in my name and hitting enter. Now I'm going to select the areas that are shed. So word to the wise here, we want to save time doing this. So I'm gonna show you a little bit of a cheat. We're first going to duplicate our layer, this goat layer here. As you can see, it's now called goat copy. And we did it the exact same way. We duplicated it the exact same way that we duplicated the background layer by clicking, dragging onto the new layer icon here, a little dog-eared page, and then it duplicated our layer. So through a very simple process of pixel sub subtraction, we will be able to create a layer that is shed and unshed just through selecting the layer, just through selecting the pixels that are shed. So we're going to enter quick mask mode again. And as you can see, it's coming up red. I'm going to get my brush tool by hitting B and now that we are working on a layer that has no information in the background, we don't have to worry about being so clean with our selection on these borders. So I know that this whole area is shed. I also know that a lot of that hair that's on the neck here is coming from somewhere else. So I'm gonna hit Command Z, sorry. Um, I'm gonna undo what I just did. That's another good short key to know. Command Z undoes. So I know that this hair is coming from probably one strip of area right about here. I can see the sort of where all that hair is stemming from. So I just wanna be sure to select as much of this unshed area or this shed area rather as possible. It looks to me like there is actually a little bit of this leg that is shed. We'll go ahead and select some of this as well. And then I remember from earlier that there's this little section on the abdomen as well. And this little dread looking thing 
that's hanging down here is similar to the neck area. It's likely coming from above. So we're going to ignore that that's dropping down and we're going to go ahead and select it because the area underneath it is shed more than likely. So that looks about right on our selections here. And again, really quick and easy math. I'm going to hit Q now and see how my areas are selected. There's the marching ants. Click the lasso tool, right click, and I'm gonna go down to layer via cut. Now what happens is I still have my goat copy layer, I still have my goat layer, and I have a new layer. So I'm gonna deselect my goat layer right here. And then my goat copy layer is now, if you unclick this layer one here, is my unshed. So I'm going to go ahead and title that unshed. And then as you can see, layer one is my shed. So that was a quick way to get both bits of information without having to select both the shed and then later the unshed. Again, I am obsessively organized on Photoshop, so I'm going to go ahead and make a new group. This little folder down here indicates creating a new group. And I'm going to title my group goat. And I did that by selecting the layers that I wanted in the group and dragging them into the new folder here. So again, that's just goat. So we're going to go ahead and duplicate these layers here by selecting them and then dragging and duplicating. And as you can see, now we have a shed copy, unshed copy, goat copy. So I want to remove these layers from this folder and I can do that by just dragging them right above the folder. And I wanna make a new group for these. And these are going to be called rendered. So if I close this layer here and open this, or this folder here and open this folder, I have my rendered folder now. So we've got the shed copy and shed copy, goat copy. I don't need this goat layer, so I'm gonna delete it and just by clicking the layer and hitting the delete key. And what we're going to do now is render our image. So we want the unshed to be red and the shed to be black. This makes it easier for us later in case we want to quickly reference an image file. And you'll see why in just one second. So we're going to right click on our layer. Let's start with the unshed red layer. And I want to select pixels. And as you can see, my ants are marching now around the unshed area. And I'm going to go up to Edit, Fill, and I want to use a color, and I'll be using red. My red is already selected, but if it wasn't, I could quickly select it from up here. Click OK, OK. So as you can see, Red Unshed is now red. And we're going to do the same thing with the Shed Black layer. We're going to click, select Pixels, Edit, fill and then black is conveniently already here and rendered in order to deselect you can hit command D and that'll allow you to deselect the animal quickly the last thing that we need to do for this rendered folder is create a white layer so I'm just going to click the new layer tab as you can see, I've now created a new layer. I'm going to drag it underneath. Like I said, it's like a lasagna. So anything that's on the bottom is going to be on the bottom. Anything that's on the top is on the top. So the layer is going to be titled background white. We're going to go to edit, fill. You guessed it, white. Okay. 
And that allows us to have a background image or a background layer when we save this as a JPEG later. So I'm going to go ahead and close my file here or the close this grouping and I'm going to deselect it. I don't need to be working with the rendered area anymore. And I'm going to drop down this goat. So with Photoshop, whenever you change pixels, so we change them by filling them earlier. Whenever you change them in any way, they're never the same. So we want to work with our information as close to the truth as possible. So we want to go and reference for our pixel counting. We want to reference these original layers, the shed and unshed layers in the goat folder. So we're going to go to the unshed layer first, I'm going to right click again, select pixels. And up here in my histogram, I'm now going to get a pixel count. However, this is not caught up. So I want to go ahead and click on this warning, this little exclamation point, just to make sure that I'm actually getting a correct reading. Now, again, my ants are marching around my area. I have 20, sorry, 282,297 pixels are unshed. So that's the number that you would enter into the spreadsheet under unshed. And then I can do the same thing with the shed, right clicking, select pixels. And I have no exclamation point, so I don't have to worry about the warning. Now I have 39,119 pixels for my shed area. We're going to be saving our files in two different ways, as I mentioned. We're going to be saving them as a Photoshop file, which you can do easily just by going to File, Save As. And for ease, I'm just going to be saving this in the Dropbox in my folder. And here are my Photoshop files. And I've secretly already done this tutorial, so <laughs> there's my original file. So I'm going to be saving it again. And I'm going to click OK. And then I'm also going to be saving this as a JPEG. So I'm going to click on this rendered area here. I want to click this eye so that I can see all of these layers. And the way that the JPEG files work, unlike the Photoshop files, is that I have no layers in a JPEG file. So everything that I see on my screen right now is exactly the way that the JPEG will save. So I want to make sure that that white layer is visible, the shed is visible, and the unshed is visible. I'm going to go up to File, Save As, and then I have my rendered file here, or my rendered folder, and I'm going to save it as, like I said, as a JPEG. And again, I already have this file here. So I'm just going to save. It's going to ask me to override it, I think. Yep. And so we're just going to replace that. And you want to save it as the maximum file size. And since this is white, black, and red, we don't have a whole lot of information here. So this will still be a very small file. And you click OK. When we're saving our files, we want to make sure to keep the file name exactly the same as it is when we receive the file. This will help us keep, keep organized, and in case we need to reference anything later, it'll be easily accessible. So that sums up our Photoshop tutorial. Again, I'm Joanna from the Mountain Goat Molt Project, and this was a video tutorial on how to use Adobe Photoshop to calculate goat molt. I'm available via email for any questions, and my email address is hello at Joanna Novak, N O W A K, dot photography. Thank you very much.